the halfway point of the NASCAR Canyon Pro Series West Tour hit Douglas County last Saturday. For one man, it was a passionate race. And no doubt that man was Derek Krause, who led it wire to wire, scoring back to back victories in the state of Oregon. What did that mean for the championship trail? Did any action happen? And for one man, could this be the end of the trail? All of this and more on the latest episode of West Coast Wednesday. And it starts right now. Alrighty, episode number 15 of West Coast Wednesday. Yes, there will be a review. Yes, it is back-to-back episodes. If you just watched the last one not that long ago of the review of Sonoma, I'm bringing you some highlights for Douglas County because I actually had the time. Because we're going to bring you the highlights of the Clint Newell Auto Group Toyota 150. The fastest man in practice, the fastest man in qualifying. How will he do in the race? That was the question for Derek Krause as he led the field to the green flag while it was single file to start off. The first bit of action took place on the 23rd lap when, surprise, surprise, Ron Jay spun in turn number three. That's been the tale of the season for the Canadian driver. Once the restart came along, once again, it was Krause who led the way. But that didn't mean there was a lack of action as Memphis picked up on the 35th lap when a three car incident in turn number two happened involving Keith McGee. Taylor Canfield and Takuma Koga. That's going to be a painful experience, and he'll be facing the pain in the repair shop. They're going to red flag the event. They're going to stop the field, restart the race, and try and settle it. Yes, for the second straight race in a row, a stoppage. This one lasted 22 minutes. If you ask me, it should have been half. After that whole mess and an additional cautions, that was a grand total. I'm not lying, 22 laps. So, when did the race restart it? The 57th lap, and again, Kraus was the man of the hour. A few laps later, once again, it was Keith McGee in the 37. He had a really, really rough going. He spawned in turn four. This time, it only lasted six laps under caution. It was the same song and dance that we've been telling you the entire time. It is Jones versus Deegan. Deegan versus Jones. They were battling it out. But and Brittany Samora into the mix. Samora needed this strong right after finishing 29th in Sonoma. Meanwhile, back to Deegan. She found an opening. But the rookie foe of a year ago, Trevor Huddleston, came back into the mix. Cody Vanderwall moved up to the top three before hitting lap 100. He was having a stout of a race and what could be the final race of his championship trail for now. Then Deegan was gaining momentum. He won his second place up front Vanderwall with 45 laps to go. And then the caution will come out. Taking place on lap 110 and it involved the number 31 of James Cooley who was making his first k and West start since Cooley in 2014. Then on lap number 115, the green flag came out once again with Deegan taking second from Vanderwall and then later on a bump a huge bump by Jones to eventually get by Cody Vanderwall for third less than 25 to go it was still Derek Krause leading then the caution will come out involving none other than Cody Vanderwall he wouldn't be the only one involved as also the 38 of John Wood 36 of Ron Jay, no surprise, and the 37 of Keith McGee involved in the third incident of the day. And because of that, Cody Vanderwall had hood damage. But did he pit it? No, sir. He wanted that strong result. He was running in fourth, and then it would be an 18 lap shootout to the finish. And it was Krause and Deegan that top two in the championship trail. Jones with a tremendous restart to give by Deegan. Trevor Huddleston follows soon, and bye-bye field. That was the words of Derek Krause as he once again all the way, and he had another race. Oh, wait, hold the phone. Travis Milburn, where did he come from? He went by Hilly Deegan for four. Brittany Samora was looking to deny Travis Milburn from a top five slot with live laps to go. Samora gets by Milburn with these headed out of the back stretch. Then the battle went to Deegan and Huddleston for third. And in that case, it was Deegan who took third as Derek Krause, wire to wire, back to back wins at Douglas County. He gains more points in the championship trail over Deegan that will pay no doubt dividends in the long run as the next race is the combo at Iowa. This is what Krause had to say. Yeah, this is a really good race car they prepared for me tonight. It was uh, really good on the longer runs. It fired off a little tight, but. Overall, once you got 10, 15 laps on these tires, it was really fast, so I just can't thank these BMR guys enough. You led every lap of tonight. Tell me this isn't the best race car that you've ever driven. 
Yeah, this was definitely one of them. This is a really good race car that they prepared, like I said, and I really am looking forward to the next race at Iowa. Once again, a runner-up finish for Jagger Jones, but again, he wants that win. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with our run. We had a great second face place finish tonight. Um, we just we, we weren't there with Derek. He was kind of in his leave zone, but behind him, it was a dog race. Just trying to get an odd number so you could be on the inside for the restarts. That was super key. Um, and then that was that was pretty much what uh, led us to a second. I think we had speed for second or third, and that's where we put it. A third place run by Deegan shows some disappointment as she described how her night went. Eh, I'd say the outside lane was just so bad on restarts. It just, it would not, like, there's just, it was so slick up there. So it was just such tight racing. It's so hard to get down. So by the time I get down, it's already in fifth and then uh, have to make way back up. But it's just all strategy and how lucky you get with the yellows if you want to be in second or if you want to be in third. I was good when I was in third, but then I get in second and then we get screwed on the next restart. So it was just a very strategy race and we just didn't get the good end of the restarts. But in the end, good point today. No wrecked equipment. Go on to the next one, and hopefully we get another one eventually. Here are the final results of the Clint Newell Auto Group Toyota 150. Derek Krause led a wire-to-wire, -wire collecting 48 points, followed by Jagger Jones in second, Haley Deegan in third, Trevor Huddleston in fourth, running up the top five is Brittany Samora. Sixth through tenth consists of Travis Milburn, who needed that run. Todd Sousa had a quiet day to finish seventh. Cody Vanderwall went from four to one point to eight. Not the result he would have wanted after having a tremendous performance. John Wooden in ninth and Takuma Koga with yet another top ten. In the bottom five, it was Keith McGee, Ron Jay, James Cooley, Matt Levine, who fell out of the race due to an ignition failure and running out the field is Taylor Canfield after being involved in that red flag. The race lasted a grand total of 57 minutes and 29 seconds with five cautions for 44 laps, the margin of victory, 3.158 seconds. With Krauss winning and leading wire to wire the championship trail, saw a little bit of a shakeup. With Haley Deegan now eight markers behind, she'll need a big race at Iowa. Trevor Huddleston and Jagger Jones are tied for third. Matt Levine is now 40. It's essentially now a four person battle for the championship trail. Brittany Samora in 6.45 behind, Cody Vanderwall in 7. Big note on Vanderwall, as I'll mention just momentarily. Todd Souza in 8th, Travis Milburn in 9th, Takuma Koga runs out the top 10. I was a bit of a tangent on this one, but I decided, you know, let me try it raw without putting a script on those highlights like I typically do. I think I did okay, but I'm going to stick with the script going forward, not going to lie. But yeah, Cody Vanderwall. That's the first thing I want to talk about, Cody Vanderwall. Because a, what was it, an Instagram or a tweet that I saw hours after an 8th place resolve at Douglas County. He has no sponsors going to Iowa. He has none. He drove an unsponsored car at Sonoma and that did not bode well because he had multiple incidents that day. Notably in turn number 2 that I captured a photo with after all that clutter of dust unfolded. That is not good for Vanderwall. It's heartbreaking to see Vanderwall, who a year ago won two races, both from Tucson, to go from a team that you, when you look at, when you look at the grand scheme of things, he made that team look good, and it went to Levine, which is in many aspects an upgrade. And now his championship trail could be over. He may not even get to Iowa, which is unfortunate because you know what that would mean. You know what that would mean. If Vanderwall does not run Iowa, and God knows if he'll run any more races, I would hope he does, because Cody Vanderwall is pretty good. He, he's just not had the luck. He's had no luck this season. The only luck he had was in Colorado. Otherwise, the luck has just not been there like I would have hoped. And that Levine car, I thought he was going to be right up there. Well, but you, when you look at the championship trail, Matt Levine is the one ahead of the probably the more transcendent driver of that group. So it has got to be disencouraging that you may lose a team on the West that will put more advantage on those East drivers, which field-wise have had their issues as well. They canceled the race because of a lack of field interest. So for Krause's sake, it's one less race to worry about. But it shows the state of the regionals right now. In 2020, that's hopefully there's an answer to it by putting both the KN race regionals, East and West, and ARCA together. That be we may see a dream lineup in size increasing. 
Sure, 15 is not bad for Douglas County compared to the 32 at Sonoma. That's not bad, but that's just the average. But for Vanderbilt, not maybe unlikely to be there. I hope maybe, well, time will tell, of course. Maybe, he, maybe he'll find a sponsor and then he'll run Iowa after all. But this, but it kind of shows that there's that strong likelihood that Ron Jay could finish in the top 10 if Vanderbilt somehow does not run. There's not that tweet or instance and that post didn't say the season's over. They just say it's unlikely he'll be in Iowa due to sponsorship woes. So we'll see what happens going forward. And when the entry list comes out for Iowa, we'll give you the rundown. And by that point, which more than likely that will be the next episode of West Coast Wednesday, we'll see if Vanderwall shows up on that entry list to see that 43 because he's just not had the season that I would have thought. If they're wanting to talk about disappointing seasons. Vanderwall right on top of the list. Right on top of the list. Trevor Huddleston is most improved. There's no doubt about it. Most improved. He's pretty much locked that thing in the bag for now. But yeah, it is a form-person battle for the championship now at the halfway mark. There's seven more races to go. Five of them standalones. Two of them re- two of them combos. Ignoring the combo races. This is where he, this is where McAdelli's season would be occasionally on the rise, and while Sunrise Four would cr- scratch and claw to find anything they can. So far, it's only Huddleston with that one win in Irwindale. And I mentioned time and time again, every single race it seems to keep an eye on Jagger Jones. The question is, he needs to put a race together. Sure, Krause was in a different zip code. We all know how, how Krause was doing. He was the class of the field the whole from the moment he hit the track. The moment the holler arrived in Oregon, he was going to be the man to beat. And nobody could beat him. Nobody. Not one. Jagger Jones, with that run, that runner-up finish, gaining more points from over Samora, as I already, show, already told you, I think the only way Samora can win Rookie of the Year at this point is if she outperforms Jones in those combo races. Because you know you're going to have at least 20 or more cars. Jones needs to have some sort of problem. Which, in, in, when you think about Sunrise Sport, that rarely happens. It rarely does. The, the, it rarely does, period. Sunrise Sport never usually have much problems like mechanical or reliability of the car. Never, rarely you see that. McAnally, has started, they're the top team, but they have their moments. Look at Sonoma. They did. They had. They had Kraus with the hood up. Samora out of the race. Jones, there's no no discredit that Joe Jones has been stout, pretty stuff for his rookie year. No doubt he's going to be a future k West champion, maybe more, and maybe a national star. We'll see. But this is his first season. The same thing for Samora. I think she could be. Who knows? Maybe as good as her female counterpart. It's just a matter of when, if, if just luck and results. That's just how this regional game works. It's luck and getting those top threes. And I already talked about this. The KN West top three, superb. Arca, top three. Really, it's no doubt top three. Look at, look at this Arca season in a nutshell. You want, if you want to be considered impressive, top three. Trucks, I say top five, maybe roughly in the rough in the top ten, maybe. But in the regionals, to me, it's the top three. If you get runs of top threes, I'll drive for most of them. You're no doubt going to be ahead of the game. And that's how I feel about Jones. Sure, Deegan has won most of those battles. No doubt. This one, it was Jones again. So, it, we'll see what, how 2020 unfolds because I feel like Jones and Deacon could be a fun feud on the way up. It's been a fun feud. It's, I, I mention it on these highlights every time. It's Jones versus Deacon, Deacon versus Jones. It's like, it's like the phrase of this whole series. And no doubt, it'll continue to be the phrase. But what the question will be, will it be for a, for a race win like it was in Vegas? Time will tell. Because if it's for race wins, that makes the rivalries twice as good when it's battling for the wins. Deegan had a good showing, no doubt. He had a good showing. It's just not on the level of Derek Cross. And she said it, and you heard it. It's, it's a lane preference. Lane preference was key. 
The bottom, as always, was the preferred lane. On the restarts, it's vastly different. Because if you're in the ideal lane, no doubt you're going to have an advantage. If you're not in the ideal lane, you won't. And Deegan endured that, and that's how Jones got what did what he did on that restart. That's how he did it. That's how the game is. You pick your lane. You sometimes you may not be able to pick the lane, but you do, you do what you can. So yeah. So as far as the more as decent recovery. I still think she'll get a win this season. I still think she'll she will. Obviously, everybody's going to say if those who follow Canada West well, is going to be her home track at Evergreen and Monroe. I think that could still happen, and I still feel like she will be the favorite. But I still got to say, Derek Krause is the favorite because Derek Krause, up until he had that issue with the hood up, he owned the competition. And obviously, it was won by Derek Thorne a year ago until everybody seemed like from their own, from everyone from the front to the back of the grid to even to the pits, they all wrecked. After that whole chaotic race that lasted deep into the night. Hours after it should have been over. Like five hours. It lasted like five or six hours. It, hopefully the weather is good by that point. The Evergreen. We don't have to worry about weather and all that. Because that would be a pain for me. If it's getting back home at midnight again because of weather. I doubt it, but we'll see. You never know with the state of Washington. But with the way the summers have been the past couple years... I don't think we'll have that problem when they hit Monroe in in a month. There's no doubt about it. That's really all I got to say. It was basically a Derek Krause show with some battles. Really good battles behind him. But this is but it's just kind of to show you that Derek Krause is really wanting that those double championships. And we don't know about that East all for sure. Ideally, I'd like to see him be battling for both titles. Because when he runs that combo race in Iowa, not only he's got to defend his points lead in the way, he's got to defend his points lead in the East. And we got a lot of talk about when Iowa rolls along with that preview and, of course, the review. Because, I mean, even show both championship standings. That might be tough. That might be a long episode. We'll see about that. Anyways, that will do it with West Coast Wednesday. So until we meet again, hope you enjoy this episode. And, yes, the very next review, I will go with a strip this time. It's just... A lot of stuff going down in my personal life that I had to take care of. So it's got a little bit of a time constraint. Anyways, Derek Krause, third win of 2019 in the can and West. Back to back, little wire to wire in Oregon. In the meantime, catch you guys later.